Hi everyone, welcome to the next Ask Tom episode. In this episode, we're gonna look at some histograms. Now the question that came in was about histogram features, particularly in 12C. We have a new thing called the top frequency histogram. The aim of that is if you've got a data distribution such that there's a few values which dominate the whole distribution of data and all the rest are sort of small fry, then in earlier versions, we'd struggle to create a good histogram on that, especially if there was a lot of distinct values. So in 12C, we introduced a thing called the top frequency histogram. Now, according to the documentation, you can see the rules there for what a top frequency histogram would be based on. It's all based on the number of distinct values and the fact that the vast majority of the values fall into these, uh, what I call small outlying buckets. So we had an example where we thought, surely a top frequency histogram would be created. We actually ended up with a hybrid histogram. So we're gonna look at that Ask Tom question from a much simpler perspective as to why you might not get top frequency histograms when you expect to see them as per the documentation. Let's roll some dice. So let's do a bit of revision as to why we have histograms in the first place. You've got some dice there on the bench top. Let's ask ourselves, how would we answer the question, how many dice of a certain face? So in, in SQL text, that would be where face equals some value and that value could be six or four or two or any of the numbers that you have on a dice. So to answer that before we histograms, let's have a look at what we've got here. We've got six sixes, six fours, uh, five twos, six ones, and five fives. So we've actually got 28 dice there. And how many distinct values do we have? We've actually got five distinct values. So the average number of dice per face number, we would say is the average equals 28 divided by five, and that's 5.6. So about five dice per face. And that's actually a pretty good estimate. When I look at, if I ask the question, where face equals two, my estimate will be 5.6, and you can see there's actually five. And similarly, if I ask for when face equals one or face equals four. So even without a histogram, just knowing the total number and the number of distinct values is going to be good enough in this particular case. The problem comes when we have something a little bit odd about the distribution. What if I ask myself the question, where face equals three? My estimate is that there'll be just over five dice. If we look there, there's actually none. That'll be a bad estimate, and that can lead to bad execution plans. And that's where histograms might have to come into play. What a histogram can tell us is the exact distribution if we're prepared to store enough information. So let's get rid of this piece of paper. A histogram says, well, I'm trying to answer the question where face equals some value. So let's work out the distribution for each of those values. I know that I've got six ones, I've got five twos, I've got no threes, I've got six fours, I've got five fives, and I've got six sixes. So that's the face, and that's the count. Now when I try and answer the question where face equals something, it doesn't really matter what I put in there, I can immediately know the right estimate. So I simply say where face equals three, I go look up here, I'm expecting there to be none. So my estimate would be zero. I look for face equals five, I go down to here, I'm expecting there to be five, my estimate equals five. So a perfect histogram, you could argue, is a frequency-based one, where I know the distribution of every single distinct value in my set of data. The problem then comes is what if I've got an enormous amount of distinct values in my data? Is it really practical to store all that histogram information? So I've changed the distribution of the dice now. We can count them up. We've got 1, 7, 12, 13. We've got 18. 18 dice. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 distinct values. So a histogram of size 5 would be great. But what if we couldn't do that? Obviously, we're assuming a much bigger distribution here. What if we were only allowed to have four histogram bits of information stored. Can we still get some value out of histograms? 
Well, yes, we can. And this is one of the things in 12C called a top frequency. You can see there that three of the dice dominate the proceedings. We've got the fours in blue, the twos in green, and the fives in black. So what we can do is for those particular dominant values, we'll allocate a histogram bucket for each one of them. So we can see for the fours, we've got six. For the twos, we've got five. And for the fives, we've got five values as well. That leaves us just with one histogram bucket left. But that's okay because we know that the remaining values are very small in this case. They're a small percentage of the total number of values. In fact, we can see that six and five and five can constitutes 16 of the 18 possible values. So we can actually simply have one bucket saying everything that's the rest is at most just a couple of values. And that'll be good enough because now when we have queries which are where the face equals four, we know the estimate will be six. Where the face equals five, we know the estimate will be five. For anything that isn't covered by a histogram, well, we know that the estimate is going to be very small and that will actually cover both the one and the six pretty much correctly. This is called a top frequency histogram in 12C. And as you can see, no pun intended, we don't need as many buckets as there are distinct values. That's pretty cool. Here is where the Ask Tom question we received became quite interesting. Using this pretty much exact sample here, when I tried to create a histogram, the database came back to me and said, I haven't got enough buckets to do a top frequency histogram, even though what I've scribbled down here on the paper seems to suggest that we would be okay to do it. Why was that? Well, one of the other things a histogram is responsible for in the database is knowing the lowest and the highest value in a column. Why do we need to do that? Because not everyone is going to do a query saying where the face equals two. We might get some ridiculous requests in saying where the face equals 19, for example. We need to know that the low and high mark for dice is one and six, because then we can do an appropriate estimate for something, a query which is where the face equals 19 or something that is outside the total expected range of the actual query. So we need not just histogram buckets to store frequency information, we also need to at least know that the histogram buckets will cover the lowest value and the highest value. And we can see here that the highest value is six, the lowest value is one, and they're not actually included in any of our buckets. So in this case, we actually need a few more buckets to actually store both the low and the high value as well. So we can revisit this example now and have another look. How many buckets will I actually need? So if I start with face number two, I know I've got five examples. If I do number three, there's none that's not in there. So next up is number four, there's six of them. Number five, there is five of those. And in terms of the rest bucket, where well, we had number six, he's only got one. And up at the top here, number one only has one as well. What buckets do I need? Well, here's my three top frequency ones. I must have buckets that store the low value, so I'm going to need a bucket there, and I must have a bucket that stores the high value, so I'm going to have one there. So in this case, I actually needed a histogram size of five, five buckets in order to store a top frequency histogram. If I'd asked for four, I would have got a hybrid histogram. You'll see that in all tab histograms saying that it's a hybrid. We couldn't actually do a top frequency one. So just be careful of that when you're using top frequency histograms. If one of the outlying values, for example, one or six is not one of your top frequency values, you're going to have to have extra buckets. Otherwise, you might end up with a hybrid. And that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Now go roll some dice. See you next time.